Hello and welcome to Locked in FPL. We're here for the Game Week 2 episode. I am, of course, FPL Nima, your host, and my co-host for the night is Peter at FPL Team underscore on X. If you have not heard of FPL Team, I can only say they're the greatest site I've used for FPL. I only go to the website to make my transfers. I use that for most other things in my planning. And this is not an ad, just to put it out there. I'm just glad Peter's here. I feel very humbled he's come on this channel in our first season in the rebrand in Locked in FPL. And yeah, we're just going to have a casual chat, Peter, right? We're just going to catch up, see what you're thinking for game week two, and really discuss both of our respective main dilemmas for our own teams this week, as well as learn a little bit more about you and how you got into FPL. So maybe we start there. I'd love to get an intro, find out how long you've been playing FPL, kind of maybe your best finish, worst finish, favorite memory, worst memory, any, anything you've got for us, and maybe how you play FPL to your style. That was good. I feel like I owe you some money for that intro. Um, I promise I didn't pay Nima to say that. Um, yeah, I've been playing since I was looking at my previous seasons. The first one was 2006 07, which I think is the furthest that goes back in terms of records. So I've been playing this game for bloody forever. Um, I wish I could say I had some amazing finishes. I think 14K is my best, and that was back in 2012. So that's when there was only probably a million people playing. So it doesn't even, it's not even that good. Um, Worst was 1.6 million, and I basically finish around 200k every year. So I'd say I'm an engaged casual, is how I would call myself, um, because I play quite casually in terms of my play style. You were touching on what's my play style. I suboptimal is what I would say. Um, I give in to FOMO way too much. I get very emotional. Um, I jump on bandwagons. I bring in players because their prices are rising or dropping, which is quite pertinent this week i guess um and go for the players like the barcos uh, the quances of this world instead of the safe steady harwood bellises and quances of the world so yeah that's me that's my play style i've been playing forever and i'm still trying to get good um maybe you can I help me that. get there <laughs> so what's ironic for me right is that here i am talking about how great your tool is and how much it's helped me and maybe therein lies the problem for you peter like Maybe you've essentially, from the goodness of your own heart, from the love of the game, been playing since the records were made in 2006, you have made everyone else better. So you've made it more difficult for yourself. Is that something you've ever felt before out of interest? Yeah, I say it quite a lot. Um, I started off building the tool to try and make myself better because I was the only person that had access to this tool. And then I thought, well, this is actually quite good. Let me uh, share it with the world. Didn't think it would ever get as popular as it did. Um, and then just through quite naturally like i've never done any marketing or anything like that it just kind of grew and grew and now yeah the amount of people that use it is staggering for me for something that was just like a little side project and as you say the problem is now everybody else has got a bit better than me and i've just kind of gone backwards or stood still at best so yeah gift and the curse i guess but at the same time right i think we've discussed this we both probably love playing fpl more for the joy of it like having players in yeah. the games you might be able to watch or you know just the whole love of beating your friends, like the mini league banter for me, that's what got me into FPL. So I started in 2012. It was in a mm -hmm. job and there was a work mini league. And I remember reading forums, trying to kind of figure out who's the best captain this week or top transfer. Back then, like it was all on forums, right? And then it was only yeah. later I kind of went to Reddit. I was a lurker reading all the threads, seeing leaks and injury news and um, RMTs, right? Daily threads. And then eventually I came to Twitter and it was a bit nicer. Because for the first time, I felt like I was seeing people like I've met you, right, through the game and through these mm -hmm. meetups. And I guess this is a nice segue at four minutes in to talk more about how we met. We essentially met at like one of the events, right, like first and then meets, I think. And we've played, you know, five-a-side friendlies. Like, we've done all kinds yeah, of stuff. You were our water like, boy. You were the water boy at Game Week 39, which is nice. The first Game Week 39. And yeah, two more happened since, right? Yeah. The one I was at, Team South won. So at least we know that as a water boy. I'm a you were the lucky charm. Yeah, you guys were missing uh, my kit man abilities as well. But um, jokes aside, I guess that's why we're here, right? And it's like through this love of this game, I just want to make this show, this season, feel like every week it's just getting on a show with my friends, chatting as if we're at an FPL meetup, about to watch the deadline pass, watch our players play. Just mm -hmm. saying, hey, like this is what I'm thinking about my team. What are you thinking? Well, that's why I say I would say that I'm an engaged casual because I do all of the things I should do, like looking at the stats, looking at team predicted lineups trying to guess all the minutes do all that sort of stuff build like what i think 
is a perfect team that can last for six weeks and then last minute it'll all go out the window because I hear one, I read one little thing that gives me massive FOMO and I change everything. And that's the problem. And then I always regret it as soon as I do it. And then I look back at how my team would have performed if I just stuck with my original good path and it always outperforms it. I was listening to your podcast yesterday with Simon from Analytics, uh, Analytics FPL and yeah, my God, the way, like it feels like FPL's slowly passing me by, if that makes sense. Like you can see that this way of playing is probably nine times out of 10 going to get you much higher overall ranks. But I think like you said, I, again, coming back to engage casual, I play the game in a very casual manner, like banter with friends. Like you said, watching games, I would, I'd sometimes will just buy a player because I'm going to watch the match in the stadium or I'll captain a player because they're on the Friday night. For example, people that bought Man United and, Fest and Fulham players, because I, going, had, I had Muniz and he flopped for me, but I just want, I couldn't go into that evening without a player. And that's exactly what I mean. Whereas, you know, most, I guess, engaged non-casuals would avoid those players and just think, think long-term, think about the week as a whole. Whereas I just think about individual moments and I live for those individual moments, I guess, um, which hampers my overall rank, but I don't care about that. I know people get stressed at the weekend if things don't go well. I don't, I just kind of laugh it off. I've got loads of like WhatsApp groups and Twitter groups and it's just, just laugh about it. It's just good fun, I guess. I love that because this kind of nicely segues actually into a moment of pure um, joy and jubilation and owning a player or not owning them in your case. So I recall yeah. there was a meet at the very first venue where I'm sure you were on the table and you're, you're swinging your top around. Um, you know, I think um, maybe Ronaldo scored or something. And then a bit later on, I'm sure Bowen Blank at the time, uh, FPL Buna was still prominent out here. He was uh, spreading the good fake news and fake leaks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and he was there with you. And I think Mariner from Net Dahol, obviously he'd, he'd come over from Singapore at the time. He hadn't moved to Dubai. Bo um, I think Dread was there as well. There was a lot of people, right? Like from the community. And um, I, I just remember it was mental. And the reaction, I should have uploaded the video. I wish I remembered. Next time I'll bring I think it was with... I think it was Mac Doherty I remember because I remember singing Mac Doherty's name and I cannot remember why. It was. I, can't, I think he I, got, I don't know if he got sent off or scored a goal or got an assist or something. But it's those moments that you live for where you're with people and that's what I mean. I play the game for those moments for that the adrenaline I guess and to have interesting games like Burnley Stoke on a Thursday night, a game I wouldn't care about. But if I've got Charlie Taylor, Taylor playing at left back, I could watch it with that excitement that maybe he'll get a clean sheet, maybe he'll score his first goal in six years, like. Like Loughton that's did, kind of, first shot in like yeah, nine exactly. years and it was a goal. That's what I mean. It's those moments that I play the game for and I know it's not going to get me, well, it might get me to number one in the world if I get very lucky 38 times, 38 weeks in a row, but I know I'm not going to win it. And it, like you've asked me about my rank history. I finished 1.6 million once. I finished 800K another time. So what? I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm still enjoying life like, what does it matter at the end of the day? And I think that's something that Simon actually said yesterday. Like, it's just numbers on a screen. And this is from an analytics guy as well. If it goes wrong, who cares? It's a number I on a screen. I think they're able to detach more from it, though, because they don't worry about the outcome-based analysis. Mm -hmm. They just, like, they make their decision. They're 100% sure that it's optimal. You said you were a suboptimal play styles. So, you know, like, yeah. when, you, when you deep it, like, the reality is it's crazy because you guys might play so polar opposite ways as each other, but... You've both got to the point which I hope to get to, which is you're both uh, wise enough and able to not let it ruin your day or your weekend or the outcome of the game impact you as much. So you're both playing in different ways, but in those respective waves, you found the best way to play, which is if you really want to survive FPL for years or decades and not be stressed because there's so many red arrows, so much pain, so much suffering. <laughs> yeah. You just got to accept at some point that once that deadline goes, you cannot have any influence on anything that happens after that mm -hmm. and whether what you thought and you input is going to end up with the output you were expecting it's even maybe silly to think that you might know which ones were good decisions and which ones were bad decisions and how to tell so there's just so yeah, many I... biases involved right like so i think that's the main thing you've got to learn to step away from the pain and that kind of also brings us on to fpl shortly about the Haaland triple captain that you saw me um putting in the poll so in the chat if you're watching live tonight we're 10 minutes in. We're going to put everyone's messages up soon and start taking shout outs and Q&A at the end as always. We will timestamp everything for that too. But yeah, let, let's just keep talking more about just in general why we play the fun, where the game's going. Let's go back to what you said about the games running away from you. I'd love you to kind of expand a bit more on that. 
Yeah, like I said, like, well, I guess it depends what you're playing the game for, I guess. Like I said, if you are playing for overall rank, it does feel that the computers, let's say, I mean, computers can calculate stuff much better than humans can. Like, so I'll give you an example. Like, I created FPL team as a planner for people to take all of their knowledge that they've gained take all of the stats that they've read throughout the week, all that sort of stuff, and then kind of plan their own route through the season. So you can plan. And if anyone's not used it before, I guess it's a site where you can load up your team and you can start planning basically every single week up to the end of the season. You can plan your chips, you can plan transfers, you can plan subs, you can plan absolutely everything. Um, and I, I wanted, I, one of my big enjoyments, I guess, of playing FPL is that strategy and that planning. It's like chess. You're trying to like think a few moves ahead and I really enjoy that side of it. Whereas the problem is there's only so many things that you can keep in your head and there's only so many routes you can go down. And that's where something like FPL Review, which is obviously a more analytics-based thing, which has a solver on it, can basically calculate those millions of different routes for you. Because there are millions of different combinations of players you can have in your team and routes you can take if i buy i don't know if i replace Quanza with pal torres tomorrow that might affect a transfer in six weeks time that i'm not even aware of or i might be able to make two moves that affects something like the combinations are literally endless so you cannot calculate it all in your head and i feel like that's where i say the game is moving away from me because i enjoy the planning aspect myself and i enjoy trying to make find my way through these murky waters by myself because that's what i enjoy whereas a computer can basically do it for you and do it better um and that's so you might I'm, you I'm, must like this season a lot then because obviously machines will take time to adapt to the rolling transfers beyond two and as the season kind of starts it's the least information it has that's live for this season so it's running off historic data so if players like us who would like to put in our own inputs are willing to kind of take a bet against the masses based on the fact that we assume that now more and more people are following say said models and there are more and more large content creators playing with said models so inherently by osmosis the entire casual base is playing through these models now it's like getting out that far right like you're not competing against certain, like millions of managers you're competing against like maybe the ten thousand most copied managers in the world <laughs> So it's really intense. It is really. That's why intense. I say it's so difficult now. That to if you, if your goal is to do well in terms of overall rank, it is very difficult. Um, and it's not to say you can't do well playing that way because maybe like you, there are human aspects that that machines can't can't detect, like the nuances of some a manager's comments or a player that's changed position. Like you say, that models take a while to adjust to. Um, so you can layer your human nuances over the top of it. But I think we've seen that over the long run, the computer normally wins. Um, and we've seen it in loads of areas with like AI and stuff. Chess grandmasters being beaten by computers, all that sort of stuff. Like it just is what it is. Um, yeah. I guess so, so some people say the game sold or close to being sold. So I'm glad that they a got the pricing a bit better because there was teams last year that you could not have this year because they cost like 119 million. But those mm -hmm. teams were, you know, common teams last year. So it's like, thank yeah. God that part got fixed. We've also not gone into a season with 80% owned Harland. So there's also that. Great, some changes. So pricing, mm -hmm. well done. Fair play. That's great news. And then you kind of come into this year. And I think I, I want to show this because I suppose I'm someone who got into FPL when the lockdown happened in 2020 by writing articles at the time. And they were called transfer trends. And that was my thing. I used to love to see who people are selling and who people are buying. Mm -hmm. And going back to what you said about planning, I was trying to do it in my head, like you said, against people who are maybe using something that can help them much more powerful than I am. But yeah. I used to write in my notepad. So I'd do what you're saying on your website, but I'd be writing it. And some people have seen these infamous screenshots. And it's like a photo of like every line is one game week. And it's like all the players I'm keeping an eye on or might buy or might sell on certain times. But I look at those days and then I look at your website, which I'm going to show some people a screenshot for my Game With Two team. And I'm like, what was I doing? Like, you have built something that you've given away for free. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure it will cost you more money to run than you would make, especially at the beginning. And the, every time it gets popular, it's going to cost you more because 
it's also seasonal so you know you don't want to pay for an annual contract for servers mm -hmm. just because of a huge rush pre-season if numbers aren't there later like you're not a huge corporation making money off people that can do that right you're a one-man mm -hmm. band like this is your hobby you made it for yourself and then you democratized fpl knowledge and the ability for people who want to play like you to have a planning tool yeah. so i just want to say that's amazing i just want to put that out there and unpack it a bit because i think what you've done is incredible like you're essentially like i suppose a sole trader in a world amongst like limited companies and all kinds of companies around there right companies with investment tech teams full-time staff yeah i mean like i'm a software engineer by trade i've been doing software engineering since i was like i don't know 13 years old so what's that like 30 years almost now um it's what i love it's a hobby it's something i really enjoy so i got to combine the two loves of loves of my life don't tell my wife that but like <laughs> two hobbies i guess which was software engineering and fantasy football are two things i absolutely love and being able to combine them um was amazing and it's funny because what you say is basically how i started i used to have notebooks and i used to write down players and i used to have like weeks columns and then when i'd move one player to another another week and i'd have all the players listed by their stats and who i think would be good and fixture runs like fdrs and stuff like that but like manually written down all that stuff and then i moved into like excel spreadsheets so it was like i could actually save it and look at it and do some calculations and stuff and then i think the big thing for me though is like i'm very visual so i have if i can't see what my team is actually going to look like like on a screen as it would in the official game it's really hard for me to see that where the weaknesses are like if you just see a list of players in a spreadsheet it's like i can't see where the weaknesses are it doesn't it doesn't hit hit me quite as much so i, I, I want to add to that tool. one quick thing because that is actually spot on because i noticed you have an alert that reminds people when they save transfers to go to the fpl site and also do them and that doing them in your tool doesn't count so i just want to add to that because your ui now that i realize why you've done it because you're so visual you didn't want to mm -hmm. see that spreadsheet with 12 rows with names on you wanted to see and you built the only tool that i can recall that looked exactly like fpl and now i'm cracking up because you have to tell people so have people emailed you before uh, i was just literally saying, about like, to say i've oh, had you I've ruined had my game weekend i have had messages before saying like oh, why didn't my why did my uh, transfers apply on the game i'm like did you did you do them on my website and they're like yeah like uh sorry but it's not how it works um but yeah i've definitely had that before um but yeah it's the, it's the visualization where i did it like I wanted, I purposely made it look like the official game. Like you could say, it's. I'm not a designer. I'm purely like back-end software engineer. Design is not my thing. So you could say it's just me being lazy and just copying the design. But I wanted it to look like the official game. So when you're building your team and looking at it in advance, you're not having to like have this like context switch between two different UIs and they look different. And like I just wanted it to look exactly how it would look in the future in the official game so i could really visualize what it's going to look like and that just kind of i don't know triggers something in my brain that that was missing from spreadsheets and paper basically i love this we've gone on such a tangent i think there's more <laughs> concurrent live viewers than ever so there's over 30 now so i assume that this means they enjoy it so people in the chat saying you know this needs to be two hours long from fpl discomfort i think we're all fascinated just to hear about obviously you're a veteran of the game for me it's not about the rank it's just about having fun and meeting like-minded people who enjoy the hobby. And then to find someone who's like gone and done all this with the hobby, I think it's super impressive. And like, I'm sure you will have been given offers and could have sold out and could have given the tech away or whatever and gotten rid of many headaches off your own head, but you didn't. So yeah, kudos to you for um, being a real champion of the FPL community. I think there isn't as much recognition as there should be for FPL teams, I guess what I'm saying. I mean, that's very... Very kind of you. Again, I need to pay you some money. Um, I think what you just said, there was something you just said that was interesting. Um, and I can't remember what it was, but I, if I remember, I'll come back to it. Oh, that we'll was it. Back. It's about the different... No, I remember now. It's about the different um, play styles, basically. You're saying, like, for us, it's not about overall rank. For us, it's just about having fun. For some people, it is about overall rank, and that's okay as well. And for some people, it's about playing... Like, there's little mini games you can play where you're only allowed to pick squads of... 90 million or you can only pick a squad of non greedy six teams or something like there's so many ways to play the game and there's so many different approaches which is why i really hate when you go on twitter and people are like judging somebody's way of playing the game or judging somebody's move or judging this or judging that it's just like calm the 
I don't know if we're allowed to swear on this, but calm no, down. No, no, no. After the first 30 seconds, um, we, we've had our issues in the past. I think we're already marked as explicit on Google Podcasts. So okay, yeah, well, ID that's, how, that's how angry it makes, well, annoyed it makes me. Like, it's just like, calm down. It's a game. Let people play how they want to play. Like, why do, why do people care so much, I guess, is, is the... But thing. that's an interesting point as well, right? And we will go to FPL in a minute because we're at 20 minutes. But um, that's a very interesting point because you're right. Like at the end of the day, like even if someone were to pick their captain based on getting a thousand likes on Twitter, I don't actually care. Like I think it's okay. a ridiculous thing to do, but I don't care. I might even retweet it if it's a crap player in the hope they captain them. You know, like I'm playing for fun and I also want to beat people, right? So I said I love the mini league. So for me, it's all about rivalry and friendly banter and the friendships along the way and the memories. With that, they have some good I'm... finishes, but it's just through luck, right? I, I, I can yeah. acknowledge when I've been lucky, and then most other times when I tried the same thing and it didn't work out, is that yeah. unlucky? I can't be so I arrogant enjoyed... to the times I was good was skill and the times I did bad was unlucky. I, I've got to acknowledge mm -hmm. the luck in both, right? Yeah, and I, like, coming back about the the captaining for a thousand likes or whatever i really enjoyed watching nathan bacon's journey to use all his chips and try and get to number one in the world in the first few weeks like it was just a bit of fun like i see so much hate in the comments you're only doing this for this that and the other it's like as long as he's having what? fun who cares, <laughs> who, cares? Yeah, who cares what like... he's doing it for for comments for likes for fun i don't even care so for me that's the other thing everyone complains that the teams are all the same that there's a template that people are following models every time that someone does anything different they also get piled in on so mm -hmm. it does feel generally a bit toxic at times um we've got three international breaks in the next three months i'm sure there won't be any issues in those times right six weeks of beef i foresee six <laughs> weeks of beef that's why i stay off twitter I, yeah i can't be bothered with it i love it so let's um i think what we should do next is i've got this on the slide actually it's from your site so I just want to add to this because as someone who loved transfer trends, and I think that's where the last 10 minute tangent came from was when I started out writing those articles, <laughs> um, I didn't have access to your site and the ability to see like other weeks. And I think this might be the only source in the world that has this in reality. And yes, the numbers might not be like the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands in these weeks ahead. But right now we're looking at moves from say game week six. So there's already still like, you know, 600 people say buying habits for Isaac. Like you're seeing these, these are the most engaged managers using your tool. Mm -hmm. So for me, even though it's a smaller sample, it's a very hot sample. It's a, it's a warm lead as to what will happen. It's telling us Man City in game week, game week two and Arsenal in game week six. Those are the two main trends we're seeing well in advance. But normally on the site and in every other tool, right, you only see what's coming now. The price change of today or tomorrow. You don't actually mm -hmm. see how could the meta or the strategy or the shift be well mm -hmm. in advance so one other question i have is do you also monitor changes to this so let's say if arsenal really stank it up the next three weeks would you somehow notice or if you don't is there a way too easily how many are gone the other way so if if the kind of is that the havertz goes from 600 to zero and then is that the jesus goes to 1000 would you notice trends like that as well that's something you can easily access out of interest because I think that would be fascinating to see how it changes now and then closer to that game week. Yeah, well, so this data on here, and it actually goes out to week eight, but you can't see it on the screen sheet, screenshot. Um, I mean, you could see it all the way out to week three. Actually, let me do a screen eight, share instead. Because then I can yeah, just there's also Because the there's also some chip strategy stuff on here as well. So you can see when people are planning to play wild cards and Let's triple captains this. and stuff. Let me zoom in as well. So this gives, like, as you say, strategy for weeks ahead that we don't really have anywhere else that's the other thing i found fascinating right so you've got the price changes at first right the yeah some price changes. changes and then like hourly ownership changes so you can see that zinchenko's the top person being brought in at the mm -hmm. moment um this is pretty standard stuff that you can get in quite a few places but the interesting stuff like you say is below because i mean there are other sites that have planners now obviously but because this is this is a tool where people are planning transfers in advance and then saving those transfers mm -hmm. i can obviously look at the numbers and see what are the most popular transfers so you can see that week six it is act to Havertz is a very popular transfer um and if you scroll and then if you look at week seven basically everybody's ditching everybody's for man city place so it probably gives you a an idea that something's happening in man city's fixtures in week seven because like you said the people using my site are probably more engaged than the average person um especially people just saving Trans saving drafts and planning all the way up to week eight. They're probably the chips that... as well, right? We've got we've got um 
We've even got some free hitters in 38. That might be curing up your discomfort in the live chat third year in a row. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's showing data all the way out. <laughs> so these are these are obviously planned. Um, so you can see that triple captain week two is quite popular compared to mm. most other things. Now, obviously, not everybody is planned their whole 38 weeks and we don't know when the doubles are going to come and all that sort of stuff but it it's kind of a little indication of of trends i guess that engaged managers are planning at least or have thought about and like you said that data on the dashboard re, uh refreshes every hour so it's 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 pretty up to date i, I honestly i love it up. i just thought it was good to do a quick screen share because this kind of takes us into the fpl so if we're going to talk about game week two how our game week one went and what our main dilemmas are. So for the final 35 minutes, we'll kind of take Q&A for 10, 15 minutes at the end. We've been starting questions. We also take a quick stop here at 25 minutes in, which I will timestamp just to do some shout outs because sorry for taking so long, everyone. But um, they were just so fascinating talking to Peter about all kinds of stuff. So let's uh, sort this that's out. It's just like a chat down the pub, like you said. That's exactly what I want it to feel like every week. So Getty FPL, good evening all. Trigger Talks FPL, good evening. Big commitment here, 5 a.m. Shout out to him as always well. coming on the pod in the international break himself. So that'd be amazing. He's Claire FPL. To to. He is, right? He, he's a fountain of knowledge as well with his... Yeah. Um, my favorite memory was um, the, the kind of the three-year rank he had where all three were like in the top 200, I think. It, it was like definitely he would have been like number one manager in the world in those three years. So it's always fascinating for me to hear from him. And I remember his mm -hmm. uh, article I used to read, like the main tips of FPO, like almost like the Ten Commandments of FPO. And I might ask him when he comes on how that's evolved and whether he still has a more modernized version of it. Or I know he's more into chess these days, though. So let's see. We'll find out. Uh, Claire FPO, good to see you. Con Bugla, good to see you, buddy. FPO Discomfort, evening all. Great to see Peter here. Nehal Kulkarni, good to see you. Hello, Peter. Love FPL team. Best planner app, in my opinion. Taste of Chaos, good to see you. Preach, brother, you're not alone. Um, Robert Ducky, squeak, squeak. Gareth Pashley, good to see you, mate. Evening, folks. Comb reminding me as well, before I forget, don't forget to give the stream a like, people. Really appreciate it if you are having a good evening with us in Locked In FPL. Just kind of, we're about to reach you lock in our team on Peter's website, if I'm honest with you. that's <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the episode. Just continue to chat as we were, but also bring in FPL for this week, not just in general and for meta and play styles and thoughts. But I just love showing your site is one thing I will say, because um, Tiggy Taylor as well, FPL team, my favorite planning tool. But yeah, the reason I think it's important to me is I think I myself didn't know how many things are on your website. Like I didn't know like, Live rank was there because I only ever used the app for the planning originally, or I didn't know that I could see certain data far in advance. There's a lot of information, even FDRs, like I didn't know you had your own. Like there's just so much there. And then I think when I realized you had your own FDRs, and I was so happy, and I just want to shout this out, was your collab with Planet FPL. And shout out to James because you brought in his predicted double game week and blank game week fixture mm -hmm. to put them in your planning tool. And that collaboration again was amazing. Um, yeah, I, I just honestly, it's incredible, man. I can't believe it. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing. Like it's it's at the core, it's a planning tool, but it does like I've I've built it over the last what three, four years or something like that. So I've I've added things to it. There's there's quite a lot of layers to it. I keep saying that I need to like do some tutorial videos on YouTube or something on how to use it and all the features and stuff. It's just I'm not a YouTuber and finding time to do that amongst everything else in the world is obviously difficult. But yeah, there is a lot on there. I I'd advise people to just take some time to just play around, look around, see what's on there. And if there's stuff missing that you want to see, let me know. I'm always more than happy to add things, change things, fix things. Oh, I love it. So let's go. So Trigger says that the models are not perfect. They have their own weaknesses. So I'll start this for the Q&A at the end because I think that's when we can kind of go into more of a discussion around uh, people's comments. But just in the interest of time, we'll finish the shout outs and keep going um, on to the FPL for game week two. So Coop Cakes, the pricing has been spot on. Last season, it felt like you could basically afford everyone. Yep, totally agree. Trigger's got another question. We'll come back to that about the uh, models coping with the need to maintain team value. Um, Coop Cakes is going to quote you, Peter, when they captain Guardiola mm -hmm. this week about why we play. What's up, Podners? Thank you for tuning in. Great to see you. And look who we have, the legend himself. You were actually talking about okay. him to me pre-show, pre right? So yeah, Gabe mm -hmm. is here, FPL Lens on X. Just dropping in to say hi to my old friends. Couldn't resist this amazing guest. Nice to see you, Peter. Good to see you, Gabe. Yeah, no, that's a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. 
Um, where are we? Uh, Gareth Pashley, does that say it is based on save drafts? Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so the, the weeks ahead transfers are based on um, that. Trigger says FPL team is so good because of its simplicity. We're almost there. Where else are we going? Trigger's yeah, blushing. That's, <laughs> that's on purpose, by the way. Like I said, the simplicity is what I wanted. I didn't want like a super complicated tool. I wanted it to just be like the official website is just simple. People know it. When they go on the website, it's a familiar place. You know what you're doing. You don't have to read a manual or documentation to start using it. Yeah, 100%. I think that's the best part I like that you say you're not into design and yet the UX is so clear to use for me. Like I don't need to like ask anything. It's just also natural. And I can see why people forget to go back to the app and make changes. Like sometimes I think I'm <laughs> in the game. Yeah, I, well, that's the thing. I'm I'm not good at design myself, like coming up with ideas. But I know when I hate a design, if that makes sense. And I I can mm. know when to fix the thing, but I can't create thing if that makes sense. It's funny you say that. So you you also mentioned that there's a lot of humbleness here because you also mentioned, oh, you know, like I can't make the YouTube videos, I can't do the design, and then like, but then it looks like you're in a very nice place. And I know actually you told me it's <laughs> not. I thought it was a studio, and then when he told me, I was like, okay, he's like camping out there and like the, the, the arm of the mic is in your face and <laughs> but but there's people in the chat asking me that's the reason i brought it up so elliot Simmons says does peter have a youtube channel i think they're asking because either they want to hear a lot more from you going forwards or that your studio setup looks incredible <laughs> yeah i so before well as well as doing software engineering i studied music like sound engineering so i always wanted to be like a sound engineer like a record producer or whatever so i've always been obsessed with audio technology and visual technology and stuff so i i just i just have this stuff because i really enjoy it and i love it um um but i yeah never created a youtube channel i do have a youtube channel where i do little shorts like little videos of like the predicted points for the the week top players for the week uh top stats for the previous week those sorts of things but no it's something i've been thinking about for a long time it just feels like there's a lot of channels on youtube and i don't just want to be another one if that makes sense so whether it's something to do with the website, like I said, more tutorial videos on using the site and stuff like that, maybe. But yeah, it's I something I think. Videos about. like that can be great, right? Like onboarding videos that maybe get sent out when you create an account. But I think that's just like user onboarding. And like, again, that that actually means you're doing more work. This thing going to cost you more time and resource again. And you're doing this for fun. So I find it incredible that over these three, four years, you haven't just built something and let it stay like that. You've constantly evolved, constantly improved. A lot of other tools out there. They're also great tools. They're all, you know, strong at different things. There are other planner tools, as you mentioned. Even the big companies try to incorporate it, right? But I still mm -hmm. feel that yours has stayed, like, true for me as the best planner because it just has this data that no one else has. I love to see, like, weeks ahead. And I feel like if me and more people contribute to saving our drafts, we might see more variety of different plans people That's have it, in yeah. the future. The more people exciting. use it, yeah, the more people use it, the more accurate the data gets, obviously. Um... And yeah, I, that's the problem with starting something like a YouTube channel. I already have a full-time job. I've just had a kid. Mm. I have to, I'm doing the website. Like time is not something I have in abundance at the moment. So trying to, it's not even just doing the YouTube channel. It's like learning how to create a YouTube channel. What software do I use? How do I stream? How do I get graphics? So like there's so much to it than it just, I'm just going to. Stop. Trust me, Talk you're just making mind, me like... think about placeholder <laughs> FC over here with the logo from Locked In FPL. It's been five, six episodes this season now. And I still don't have the final logo to show because I've just been so busy with the other one, Expected Grass, that also doesn't have a correct logo to show. And it's like mm -hmm. all the real estate needs to be updated, all the branding needs to be updated. The, the names are the names. At least those are not changing. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. So I think sometimes... You just got to throw yourself in. So I've been forced to figure things out as I go. And now it's three YouTube channels now. So three seasons. This is the third season for Arsenal. Fifth season with what was net that hall becoming locked in FPL. And new season with Simon, obviously, for Expected Grass. So no doubt, once your kid's a bit older, I'll come back to you to invite you to mm, see yeah. if you want to do something as like a, my fourth show. And I can do all the boring <laughs> setup stuff. And uh, we'll bring your wisdom in a handsome face. Yeah, Nemo, the godfather of FPL YouTube. <laughs> I still I still don't know to this day. Um, we've got a couple comments that we'll go. So Nans as well. Um, honestly, that was the one thing that did it for me. The Planet James and Team Collab. So they're just shouting that out as well. Um, Coop Cakes, listening to you guys while working, loving the vibes. Thank you so much. It's nice to hear positive uh, messages after what we said about how X and Twitter is these days. 
percentage chance of playing i love not many tools have that yeah that's pretty cool as well right because you've got the predictions and i don't think again people know you have this like i'm constantly panicking pre-deadline trying to find fred's eye booked mark or scrolling through hundreds of things to be like where did i see this guy give a team lineup and again i just didn't know you had this yeah I, again like i said it's a, another extra part is the the lineups tab which is like predicted lineups for every team with expected minutes for every single player and um i think there was a wow. comment wasn't there about um there was a comment about models not being accurate with certain things and i think expected minutes is one of those things uh this looks better if you do it on a like a larger screen yeah you I think can what see I've them as actual, is, right? I've zoomed yeah, there you, in go. So you can see them it. as oh nice. yeah so you can yeah, see them yeah. as actual pictures um so yeah, so expected minutes is still an advantage that um, managers have because even if you go onto something like FPL Review, you can still put in your expected minutes, which can massively change like the the expected uh, points and outcomes and stuff like that. So the expected minutes that power these lineups is what powers then the expected points model I've got. So it's like this big circle which then powers the prediction page at the top. So there's there's all sorts of stuff on the website, like I say, that people probably don't know is there or haven't used. Um, the top 1% page is quite interesting. I know everybody says top 10K is like the holy grail. Um, uh, these days, I guess with more players, I've kind of changed it to top 1%. So you can see the sample is 93,482 people. So I assume there are 9.3 million players in at the moment. Um, and you can see that 23,000 people have used the chip. This is obviously a bit weird in the beginning of the season because this top 1% team has no Haaland because... The teams that have done well are the teams that have Salah. They didn't have them, right? These defenders, like, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, how many game weeks in do you skewed. normally find that this settles? Because for me, I always say that I wait like ten weeks to. I was about to say top, ten. Yeah, 10? I would. I, I'd say this is pretty irrelevant until top ten because I mean, if you but scroll same, down a little bit other more, tools, right? So, if you're looking at your live yeah. rank again, I think my live rank it's, literally means nothing because I've had great starts where then like, eight weeks later I'm like five million further behind than where I started. This season, yeah. I started on seven digits, but I'm hoping to do the reverse of that. Last time, yeah, I was on six digits and went to seven. This will completely change if Harlan if Harlan scores a hat trick at the win in at the weekend. Suddenly, the top one percent of players will be full of player teams with Harlan in their team. So, this will completely change. Like if you scroll down a tiny little bit, you can see that fourteen thousand triple captains were played in the one top one percent, but they're obviously in the top one percent because they played their triple captain. So it's a bit. It's a bit skewed at the moment. And I guess it always 10 weeks the allows season. most chips to be gone as well and most people to use that. First yeah, while. and even people that have spent their chips, it's, it's given them time for the people behind them that are good at the game or have got the better teams to kind of catch those people up and start to overtake them. So you start to see a more representative top 1% of the game. Um, but it's still fun to look at and see the the popularity. I, I, I find and, this stuff fascinating though. Yeah, like I just love to know. And Barco here as well, sticking out like a sore yes, I know. <laughs> but then there's a list on the on the right. You can see that every single player in the game is there and their percentages there are their percentage ownerships in the top 1% of the game. So if you're in later in the season, you're trying to find a differential, you can literally filter this by, I don't know, 5% ownership in the top 1% and you can look for players in there that might be of interest to you or something. So there's loads of things you can do with this page. That And again, something that probably nobody knows really is there. I'm not very good at marketing as well, which is another problem. But that's why I feel like I have that to stuff. do the screen share because I just feel like that's exactly it. You're not marketing yourself. You're just constantly trying to build something that you would find helpful playing FPL for yourself. And you've mm -hmm. not tried to, you know, I guess, not manipulate. That's the wrong word. But you've not tried to profiteer is my take on it. And that's why I've always had such big respect for you and seeing you at those meets and just seeing that, you don't see yourself as some like superhuman, like there's no arrogance at all, right? Like you're just like, we're all the same. And that's how I feel about life, right? You know me, I just want to meet up with people and enjoy watching FPL and like speak to someone who cares because my family don't care if my captain blanks. No oh, one cares. Sorry, sorry. They don't understand why we feel upset that day. Like, oh, um, no, yeah, I mean, look at the fun. grand scheme of things. Does, does, does your average man on the street care that I've built a fantasy football planning app? No, like... <laughs> But that's what I mean. You're, you're grounded. You're anyway. grounded. You're grounded, though. I'd say because I think you're probably um, you've got a lot of fans more than you realize, and I think because, as you say, you stay away from kind of that public world of Twitter and social media because of how toxic it can be and uh, how chaotic it is by nature. It's nice to then have you here and kind of just see you, the real you, and 
that's again what I want this channel to feel like. I want every guest to feel like they're going to come back again. And it's just like a fireside mm -hmm. chat. We just catch up. You know, let us know in the chat, guys, if um, if there's any problems, I guess, with what we're discussing, because there's 20 minutes left and we will come to your Q&A that I've been starring and we will talk about my team on screen in a moment. But I just find it so much more fascinating than just trying to compete with all the people who do better production, better quality content, high produced. And like, I don't want to be that kind of YouTuber. I just want to mm -hmm. do podcasts and chat to people and gain insights and meet interesting people. So that's kind of what Locked in FPL will be this season. So I'm also preaching badly marketing myself like you mentioned peter for yourself <laughs> just because i want to also thank tiggy taylor and we'll go to the team so um, thank you so much this is it is huge we have 25 members before this so you've increased our membership by like a huge amount you know that's significant for us thank you so much um 20 growth right there five new members they're still called haulers from the net that haul days first four seasons if you weren't here before if you're new to the channel please do subscribe and we'll be a lot more content like this um as I mentioned, Trigger Lips in the chat, he'll, he'll be joining in a few weeks. And we have some very cool guests uh, lined up, which I will announce on X in the next few days. I think we have the next month or two sorted. And Peter was a real hero and came in clutch for uh, this one. So Nehal is now a member. Welcome to the haulers. Shout out to you. And Colm as well. If you guys want to join the Discord server, you just need to go to user settings and then go to connections and log in with the same Google account as this uh, YouTube account you're on. That will automatically add all of you who've been gifted the membership um, automatic entry into the Discord server where there's like 30, 40 of us and some Patreon members and we just have a nice time chatting and you put in the YouTube questions in advance of episodes. And it just means a lot if you can support the channel. Um, as, as we both said, Peter, we kind of do these things for the love of them. And normally it's more of a cost to ourselves. Um, like I, I kind of invest it all in and just see it as like this is the cost of having fun. Like, I don't really care. You remember the first meets when I used to have to pay mm -hmm. deposits for a venue mm -hmm. hire. And then like, sometimes I'd be ending up out of pocket. And like, at one point, the community were like, wait, why have you paid more? We'll all just pay like five pounds more each. And then like, you won't be like a huge amount out of pocket on your own if mm -hmm. eight or nine of us split it. So that made me then realize that like, this is what it's about. Just give to this community, have fun, meet people. And yeah, just, it means that we've had friendships like this come. So Let's keep going. Yeah, that, I mean, that's why just, yeah, just quickly, that's why I hate when I see all that stuff on Twitter about, you know, these people are like, especially that Reddit stuff you saw this week. It's like, mm. take time to talk to people. Everybody, everybody's nice when you talk to them. I don't know why when people get on Twitter and online, they just turn into absolute idiots. Like, the way the it world happens I guess. a lot, though, right? It's, um, mm -hmm. it, it, that's why I didn't used to tweet for years. I only ever used to tweet out like the show when it was going live, retweeting other people's content. I enjoyed things like your planner tool. That's how we met, right? So just sharing that, all that mm -hmm. good stuff. And I then realized that because of that, I'd lost contact with like lots of people I could have met. And because I was so scared of the negative side and how people might attack you or the, the way that kind of the online world can be, especially if you accidentally go viral outside of FPO into just the wider Twitter world or the, even the football world like you yeah. know you get you could end up finished overnight so but now I finally put that aside i'm like you know what i'm just gonna tweet whatever i think if i see a tweet and i have a thought i'm just gonna quote retweet whatever i'm thinking i was like i just want to chat to more people and get new perspectives and see how others think and just change my perspectives on topics not sit there lurking scrolling scrolling so that's my uh kind of thing for this year i know you probably won't be doing that but in exchange because you won't be online there I hope to see you at some of the meets. Um, there's one on the 19th of October. So yeah, if you're if anyone in the chats around London Waterloo, it's called the Thirsty Bear. Normally about 30 to 40 of us there. We watch the games. I think the 5:30 kickoff is Chelsea Liverpool. Everyone's very friendly. You know, a lot of people come alone for the first time. Just come through, guys, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get you your first drink or a food, whatever, and just meet lots of other fellow FPL managers. But um, yeah, we won't talk about the Reddit stuff because. We're way more positive than that, but that, that was ludicrous. Um, so this was my team in game week one. Um, I got 67 points. I don't know how you got on. Like, did you have a better start, a worse start? Uh, 63. I don't know if you can open another tab. You could have them side by side, I guess. Be a bit yeah, easier. Put your ID um, in as well. Open it on a separate oh, one. Well, that was the wrong um, FP dot team. FP team. Yeah, clearly. So let's put in your so ID. I one zero seven two four 
Oh, that's pretty nice. Easy one to remember. It, it's like it's plaguing you, man. 14k finish. Oh, I know, yeah. 10,700. I, I can't even get top K. I see. <laughs> Oh, because at least you do top one percent sample. I like that because I'm pretty sure that other tools on the first few weeks, like live rank tools, they just mm -hmm. use um the top ten thousand registered teams. Yeah, for the yeah. first ten thousand IDs. That's what. Which, yeah, but this is quite different to that. You go straight into the. I can see why people are in the top one percent, and it gives me more faith that I'll catch them eventually because I can see like twenty thousand out of eighty thousand used triple cap. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like it's the data is a bit skewed at the beginning like i say but it's 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 accurate of what's currently the top uh the top well what is it 90 odd thousand so yeah 63 points this week um so four points behind you i guess annoyed that i didn't captain salah because i had him i don't know i was just sure isaac was going to score a million goals but he didn't obviously and the murphy and minter stuff how annoying is that both of them going off in the first half that it could have been so different I know. I was going to say, Minte he looks incredible in preseason. He looked great in that game. Like, as I was watching match of the day, I'm not going to pretend I saw the game. I was at the um, Emirates and stuff. So, but yeah, I, I just saw the assist and I was like, no, this guy's really good. So, mm -hmm. he did I, I think good. he's exciting, right? 2%. Wow, 2%. That is wild. So, um, you have quite an interesting team, I would say. I was, um, yeah, I was about to say, there's not many you Salah, have no premium Saka, defender, Harland. right? Yeah, you have no problem. No, again, trying not, oh, I don't know if playing differently on purpose or not, but I just, I kept having like these Jota and Odegaard teams and, and stuff like that. And I just, I don't know, it was a couple of days before the season started and I thought, who are the three best attacks in my mind? And I thought, City, Liverpool, Arsenal. And I thought, who are the three best attackers? Haaland, Saka, Salah. I was like, I just want them free. I just really want them free. And then I was thinking about defences last year and how like, it was like the least clean sheets ever. You couldn't really rely on anybody for clean sheets except Arsenal. So I was like, I'm just going to go for a really cheap defense and just stack the big hitters, basically. And the annoying thing is the big hitters went off, but then everybody kept a clean sheet and it was like the worst outcome. So everybody kept a clean sheet and my two cheap midfielders that I needed to make it happen both went off in the first half. One for a concussion that seems like it wasn't even a concussion and another one because somebody else got sent off. So I feel like a bit hard done by here um but it is what it is uh, the, the thing i like the most right and i think you have been quite unlucky with it is the likes of robinson minte murphy solanke you have who i don't we both seem to back rogers um i almost went for johnson but upgraded him to esri console when i sold salah ultimately mm -hmm. i'm gutted i didn't do what you did i would have loved harlan salah saka but my plan at the time would have been trent downgraded to Quanza to do that so i would have had basically Quanza and two four million defenders Mm -hmm. Maybe if I'd been bold like you and not thought about getting Kwanzaa by selling Trent, maybe I could have gotten someone else like a Munoz or a Robinson for the next two fixtures. And I, I just like your team because, as you say, there's a millions of different paths you can take. And that's what the planning really shows on your site is once the data comes in, there's just so many routes. And one decision today, like my Kwanzaa decision or who you buy, if people have sold Kwanzaa last night, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on who they sold him to, whether it was Rico Lewis, Robinson, Kwanzaa, whoever they bought, there's going to be an impact because yep. in four or five game weeks, something they don't even know they're going to want to be doing yet might change yep. because they'll be like, oh, I don't want two players from this team. So if everyone else is then going on one trend there, your path suddenly just branches mm -hmm. off. So I'm really excited to see this season with the way the prices are more branching off. I think you're quite unlucky here if I'm right, you know, because you've got, you've got it right. I think it's the captaincy I had is that captain as well. That really... That's the one I want if to call I've just like, gone Salah, hurts, right? I mean, that's an extra, what, nine points total, I think? Yeah, five to 14, nine points extra. And suddenly it's, it looks a lot different. And then even if Murphy and Minter just play the rest of the games, mm -hmm. that's an extra, what, two, four points, or an extra four or five points or something. And suddenly it's it's actually quite a, quite a good score. Because, um, like, Munoz got the assist, Hall got a clean sheet, so they kind of... So, I mean, you think the premium defenders, Poro obviously got nine. What did Trent get in the end? Was it seven or eight? Um, eight, yeah. I so I had Jota and Trent. They both got eight. Um, if we go back here, I think. Yeah, I had Jota and Trent. They both got eight. So I did spend the money on the defenders in um, Trent and Poro, which is where I guess I made up my points on you. But then I didn't have Salah. Um, Gordon didn't do much better than um, your boy Murphy and Kunku was shocking. Um for me personally, and I think maybe if we go to the game week two teams, then it's there isn't much more to really say about game week one. I don't think we're, we're on Wednesday now. The deadline's in a few days. 
might as well look ahead, right? So if we just go back to the plan page for your team to start with. Yeah. Is this how you um, would be setting up this week? Um, I guess you wait for Pretty Minte. much, so, yeah. I need to hear on Minte what, what's going to happen with him. But apart from that, I think it it looks pretty good. I, I'm i really tempted by someone like Rico Lewis this week. Um, and Who even long term. Well, that's the problem. I don't know who I would sell. So I probably won't go there. I, I guess Lewis Hall didn't look very good at the weekend, but then the Shah sending off means that there's no way Burns going to go to left back. So I think Hall's pretty safe unless Trippier comes in and Livermore goes there. But I feel like Hall's probably safe. So it's probably one I'm going to have to let go. I just love the look of Rico Lewis in this Pep system. I would love it if he could keep Walker out the team. I feel like he has the ability to i feel like walker's kind of on the decline and lewis is on the incline and i feel like maybe we've hit that crossing point now where lewis is is better or is more important to the system as pep wants to play it this year i don't know maybe i'm just being hopeful but i've loved rico lewis for a while now and i really want him to be a thing sounds like so, you yeah, and uh, flapjack would get on <laughs> i was messaging him yesterday saying was it worth a, a wild card to get rico lewis in but um yeah, apart from that, like Barco's obviously a problem. He's being loaned out to Sevilla, is it? I can't remember. Um, he's a problem. Murphy, I can probably get away with for a couple more weeks. Minter, I, so this is a problem. If Minter doesn't play, do I want to play Rodgers up against Arsenal? I guess. I guess. It, so that's to, right? kind of like, I, I normally in previous seasons, I would have, if I had like a 4.5, like if that was Winks, I would have still probably played. I think it's the fixture mm. is blinding you maybe. Because for me, yeah. like Rogers, I want to see more. I don't know if the last game and him staying on till 90 when it was 1 1 and they needed to go for the win. I don't know if that means anything for future games. That's what Simon was telling me yesterday, I think. He's like, don't like just take that one week of information as like it's hard because, the, anything. because you can take it what two ways. You can say he played 90 minutes, which means he's absolutely nailed because he's like the favorite player. Or maybe they're thinking, well, let's give him all the minutes now before Champions League comes in. And then we can start resting him then. I don't know. Because when the Champions League comes in, there's going to have to be some sort of rotation somewhere. So maybe they're thinking, let's just, I want to say run him to the ground, but play him a lot until then and then start to rotate him. I don't know. It's end of days, a five million pound midfielder. There's not much to to lose. But then I well, thought about Barco and he was a four million defender. And there was a lot to well, lose there. So. But Barco, we really got done by, didn't we? Um, did you see your FPL Rockstars tweet? Um earlier i think it was today he really had me laughing man well i think i did but i can't remember remind me what he said so, so obviously like as apologized about the barco pick and then oh, uh, rockstar yeah, replied and goes well when i said <laughs> barco can literally play anywhere i didn't know what he meant <laughs> i do remember <laughs> so that, that maybe like chuckle gonna, as well <laughs> he's going to be playing in another country it looks like for anyone who doesn't know i'm a fellow barco you know he is uh, gone he's gone on loan for one year to seville is it I yeah, the yeah. problem is I now have two four million mid uh, defenders that didn't start, so <laughs> that's great. Uh, but I feel like Johnson probably will come in for this game. I feel like um, they played to Anzebi because they were playing against Liverpool. Well, Johnson probably won't come in for this game because it's City, but when I need Johnson, I think like he'll probably be coming into the team. Let's hope. On that note, look at their fixtures afterwards, right? I know this is yeah. kind of got it's got shades of uh, last season when we had a. Um, Doughty and Morris and there was the double game week and the Luton captaincy but mm -hmm. here we have Fulham, Brighton Southampton, Villa, West Ham not bad on the bench it's not bad is it like if, if you didn't really need them if one of your defenders had a suspension or injury yeah, I'd be happy to play him in that you play him well I'd probably want to swap him to Greaves because he looks quite uh, dangerous in the air for it switch so if you yeah, I didn't know again, about I'd swap it to him so I was going to say, I saw his name cropping up in the last couple of days and like it hadn't come up before. And even Johnson hadn't come up before. So for me, the Ipswich defenders, like they just hadn't been in the, I hadn't seen them in, in the group think. So that's why yeah, I think if I'd gone with two, four millions, I would have gone with, I thought maybe I can find through Johnson this year's Doughty, but I haven't gone there yet. So that's the thing. So I hope it works I out. I mean, there is a chance. Who's the, the guy that went off injured? Who's like the right winger, I think. So there's a chance he could end up playing right wing right midfield maybe but yeah i think he's one to watch um there's a there's enough 4.0 million 
defenders that are nailed on to play if you want one. Like there's the Leicester centre backs, there's the Southampton centre back, there's the Ipswich centre back. Like there's enough out there if you want a cheap bench. And again, this is where I play very differently to like what analytics would probably say is optimal and having like a strong bench to rotate. I I've always kind of played. And again, this is coming back to, I don't know if the game's passing me by, but I've always played with a very cheap bench because I love to have all my money on the on the field, on the players that are actually playing, if that makes sense. So, I'm similar to you, and yeah. I feel like that's where I went wrong. It's like I wanted Saka so badly that I got rid of Salah, whereas previously I would have been happy going in with a 4.5 mil mid, two 4 million mm-hmm. defenders, squeezing everyone. And if something goes it, wrong, it yeah. goes wrong. But like, there's a wild card. Who cares? It even paid me to put Rogers on the bench at 5 million. Like I would normally just had a 4.5, but I literally had 0.5 spare. I was like, well, okay, let's get Rogers just for a little bit of rotation if I need it, um, which I might do with Minte this week. So it might actually work out. Um, yeah. No, that's fair. Um, and captaincy wise, I assume um, we should probably check the results uh, of the poll yeah. so far, but I'm, I'm assuming it would be Haaland um, for you. Yeah, I'm not even going to. You're not, not going to. What about like a Guardiola? Yeah. If you had Guardiola, would you be concerned about his positioning in the last game? Like, I've seen some people I've, talking about yeah. Doku and, you know, if Grealish plays, that's probably better for Guardiola. If Doku plays, like, Doku's going to be in the positions you want Guardiola to be in. Well, I think coming back to the Rico Lewis, I think Rico Lewis is the problem for Guardiola because if he's going to play that inverted role, Guardiola's going to drop into that back three and he's basically going to play as a centre-back for the majority of the game. Um, so I think Rico Lewis is probably the problem for Guardiola and if I could choose one of the other for this week anyway I would probably choose Rico Lewis over Guardiola to be honest if it's a one week decision I really like that even for the one week decision wow I love that it's just yeah so for this tactic yeah if they line up the same way with no Walker with um Doku as well they line up in the same way Rico Lewis was hanging out in the box at times he was on the edge of the box like when Bernardo Silva played that pass to Haaland for the goal I'm pretty sure he was looking for Rico Lewis on the edge of the box and if you just look at the positions he was in it's it's a bit it's a bit insane he's like he's not even an inverted midfielder anymore it's like an inverted number 10 or something so if it was this one week I would choose Lewis over Guardiola you know what's funny it's like chasing the holy grail because people I saw were mocking like other people as we said for like their play style because they were like you're getting rid of Kwanzaa because he's a rotation risk and you're buying Rico Lewis he's a rotation and it's like and then in one week's time yeah, I'm selling Rico Lewis, but, but who are we to judge, right? Like, I don't care. Like, obviously, I wanted Kwanzaa because I thought he could be game-breaking if he started most of the season at that price. And it's the same with Rico Lewis. And exactly. If so I, if I had Kwanzaa, I would have bought Rico Lewis. 100% so you I would have bought Rico Lewis. Tried. You wouldn't have gone Robinson then, right? You would have gone Rico Lewis. If I had Kwanzaa, I would have bought Rico Lewis. 100% you no doubt. Anyway, so you like him. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah you like him. I would have 100% bought Rico Lewis and I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought twice about it, to be honest. If it becomes way, a problem, it becomes a problem. Like, I'll deal with it then. Like, like we but that's how I think, like problem. you, right? And yet, it seems like that is a suboptimal way to play. Um, it probably really is. Trying I'm to prob- bet against, like, like, statistically, like, say, like, poker. Like, we're kind of, like, raising big, hoping someone will fold through a yeah, bluff that- of ours. <laughs> well, that's what we're trying to do in this poker game. We're, we're not, we're not raising to- from a position of strength. Yeah, but coming back to like where the models can't see things, that's an example. They probably don't even have Rico. Well, they might have Rico Lewis's. I think I looked on review earlier and it was like 27 minutes expected for Rico Lewis. If you think he's going to play and you think he's going to play in this inverted role that basically makes him a number eight or 10, that's something that the models haven't seen yet. So maybe you could get ahead for two or three weeks. And maybe it all goes wrong and he gets dropped for Walker and he doesn't play again. But then again, you just move on. Sell him for someone else. Like, see, that's beautiful. So it's funny because it seems like we're willing to have players that are going to get injured or injury prone or rotation risk just because we really want to chase that ceiling. Whereas maybe what we're saying is others will go for more of a steady stream of points, not have to make transfers with risks with like say fullbacks, maybe yeah. something for center backs. There's a I lot mean, of look at my team. I've got Jacob Murphy and Minter and Barco and Johnson and Rogers <laughs> and Lewis Hall. Like these are not picks that people would say are safe and secure. Um, and there's a lot of them. But that's just that's just how I play, and I'll deal with it. And when it becomes a problem, if it becomes a problem, I so I feel like I got unlucky right? this week with yeah. I feel like I got unlucky this week with Murphy and Minter. On another day, Minter stays on, gets a goal as well, like a Dingra did when he came on, and he's got a 14 point haul as well. Murphy stays on and gets a goal or an assist. Like it was a like great I was a fixture. Unlucky. I don't know who to be more angry at, like 
Fabian Scher or the referee. Mm. I just don't know because it feels yeah. like that ruined my my whole plan. Like the, it ruined the, is that captaincy? It ruined mm-hmm. the Gordon pick. It ruined Jacob Murphy for you. It's just I, I don't know who to be more angry at. Really, um, let's have a look. That's what you're saying about um, not get like once the game starts, you just got to try and not get annoyed by these things. Like it's out of your hands at that point. You you can't plan for a Shah red card or somebody getting a concussion or anything like that. So just got to let it go really got to roll with hope the for the next team. hope the next week that it, it evens itself out 100 percent. so i've actually got the poll results so it is quite interesting so there's 55 votes on youtube and it says are you on triple captain harland in game week two so only 20 percent of the 55 votes are on triple captain 80 percent are no when i did it with simon on a expected grass our new podcast which is uh, mostly two episodes in now yesterday i think it was more like 30 percent was yes so it does seem as the sample sizes grow, less people are doing it. And I think we'll see some polls on X over the week. And once presses are done, as we get closer to deadline. On that note, just not FPL related, but I'm so fuming that they've let uh, Gundogan go for free from Barcelona. Ex-club captain coming in as a rotation option. I'm sickened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're so good. And then I just see Gundogan coming back and I'm like, oh, this is not serious. They're taking the piss. Yeah. It, uh... It's just adding to the pet roulette again. Yeah, I think he will be more of a rotation option. I think he left because he wanted more guaranteed minutes. So I assume coming back this time, like he must have a bit more of an acceptance, you would think, of playing a different role. I think he's like 34 years old. So I don't think yeah, he's, he's coming in thinking he's going to be like playing every game. But mm-hmm. damn, ex-club captain coming in to help get your fifth Premier League in a row. I'm getting worried, mate. <laughs> yeah. um, so I am also on the wrong captain, as you can see. So yeah, I would be Haaland captain. Um, for me, my biggest dilemma, I guess, talking about the kind of what locked in FPL is about, the ethos is we spend 40, 50 minutes just getting to know, I guess, having a fun, casual chat, enjoy whatever's relevant that week in our minds about FPL. Mm-hmm. But then the next thing is, by the end of the episode, the idea is we're locked in. So you're kind of locked in, I think, if we go back to that. So you're kind of depends how many re- how much Rico Lewis hype I read during the week, how much I speak to Flapjack, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so the more you see Rico Lewis screenshots, the more chance uh, that he comes in. You know, it'll build during the week by Friday, he'll be essential in everyone's mind. So, you know, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Like, I'm gonna be seeing people selling Lewis Hall because they're like making narratives about how now he's been dropped in the presser. Yeah. You know, if Newcastle sign um, a centre back. Oh man, the hype there. Thank God Cher is banned for a bit. At least that kind of nails Hall. It, uh, it does get rid of the whole burn problem, but there is still the Livermento left back, Trippier right back. But I, I mean, listening to Newcastle fans, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. I just don't think it helped that Hall didn't have a great game last weekend. Is If that didn't happen, I don't think there would even be a conversation about it. So probably just overthinking again. I'm trying to see what else. So yeah, for me, Poro, that's my, I guess, from where I am locked in wise. I generally make moves on the day of deadline. I always try to wait unless I'm like going to be priced out. And equally, mm-hmm. I don't really have any moves I want to make. And I don't know about Poro. Like, if he's fit, I want him, right? Like, that, that's Especially kind of that reality. fixture. Yeah, it just feels like that's the best fixture in the next three. Um, and the, me, the positions he was picking up. I mean, how often do you see a fullback scoring a headed goal from, like, the middle of the box? Like, the positions he gets in are just insane for a 5.5 million pound. It reminded defender. me of... I guess, um, Kai, like the way like Saka delivered the ball into the box and Kai ran in and mm. scored. It was yeah, it was very similar, yeah. Better. But I guess Poro's never going to keep a clean sheet, so you've got to kind of compare him to a 5.5 mid. Do you, do you, you say never, and you know what? People will tell you you're just a hater, but it is yeah. truly never. Um, I think I saw um, I saw some data about this, now that you mention it, about like the last number of games. Like yeah. it goes back like 30 games and they've had like maybe hand for the clean sheets and they were basically all against promoted teams and as we saw mm-hmm. against Leicester even against promoted teams that's not guaranteed so definitely yeah, um, he... I love Poro but um, yeah, I'm not expecting no clean sheet I think I knew that going into the season mm-hmm. but I mean he's just so attacking that I mean you think he's only a million pounds more than a 4.5 defender like the extra million is probably worth it though I didn't go that route but so I, I had him instead of Guardiola, I suppose. So I kind of really need this fixture because, you know, like it would have been better to get two fixtures from Guardiola than one from Poro, um, even though his squad is fantastic. Um, yeah, um, he's definitely like, what do you say about people who say it's crazy to pick your team in game one based on preseason? And obviously Poro scored a couple goals in preseason as well. 
that's partly why he was here, but I wouldn't say that's why. I'm actually upset he scored in preseason because yeah. he was getting in those positions last year and he wasn't getting the returns, but underlying statistics-wise and from what I could see, it just was such an exciting pick. And like, Yeah, he's the one him. I really wanted that going for a cheap defence, I was really upset that I couldn't get him. I think preseason is good for looking at like structures, formations, minutes, all that sort of stuff. Um, I think it's useful. Like I said, you've just got to use all the information you've got and part of the information we have is preseason. So it'd be silly to ignore it and just say it's not worth anything. It probably doesn't hold as... How well, quickly do you weigh it out? So like, let's say now say it, one week of data. Like, do you compare like now... Because do you then use preseason plus the one week of data and then give them different weightings? So like maybe you give... 90% to preseason, 10% to game week one, then 20% when you get to game week two, 80% to preseason. Or do you shift preseason out and then add 38 weeks from last season? So do you actually start doing like 80% strength to last season's data for all 38 weeks, 20% to two weeks of data this season? Like, is, is that something you do? Because Mariner and Gabe, like when they used to run obviously the FDRs and the next few models, like there was always this stuff about we needed to get to like six home games and six away games for each team. Mm-hmm. before you really felt you could analyze home and away for defenses and attacks in the metrics that yeah, you, were unfortunately there. you need a big sample size because you could just be unlucky and play man city liverpool and arsenal away in your first three home games and your stats are just going to look rubbish just just how it is so you do need a, a good range of data but there's a good example in your team Unkunku played like back-to-back 90 minutes in preseason multiple times and then it comes to the first premier league game and he makes 58 minutes and gets taken off so, and he starts at a position he didn't even play in in the preseason. Right? Yeah, Left-wing. so what do you weigh highly? Do you high, do you weigh more highly the first Premier League game where he was on the left wing and got taken off after 58 minutes or preseason when he was in a different position playing 90 minutes for multiple back-to-back games? Probably, like I said, the Premier League, that's when stuff gets real. So that has obviously has a much higher weighting, I guess. Um, but do you just throw away that preseason stuff? I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts on, on Kunku moving forward are after that. It's yeah, because I game I was sample size running. of one game. Mm. You know, I was a lot of people him. were. I, I still think he was the best 6.5 million if the season kind of goes on, right? So in my mm. mind, I was convinced. I was convinced by him. I still am. I think I'm blinded by a few years ago at Leipzig and Champions League fantasy. And he was like a captaincy option on the days he played, and he was serious. He was that returning points every game, just unreal. Mm. We've not seen that guy at Chelsea yet, but sometimes when I saw him last season when he was being managed and getting fitness up. I saw him in the box and I see two, three players around him. And the ability mm-hmm. he had to just keep hold of the ball in those high pressure moments in the box and either lay it up or get a shot. I was like, okay, this is sparks of the Nkunku I saw years ago. And mm-hmm. so I have huge hopes for him. I hope he's not playing that left wing role. I think Pedro Neto will most likely, right? And yeah, then I think so. Going forward, then Jao well, Felix like, is coming in. Where's Jao Felix going to be? Oh, yeah, where's Jao Felix? It's crazy. So I'll, he's a wait and see for me. But for me, I think it would be after game week three. So I will give him the next two. I'll give him this um, Wolves away yeah. and Crystal Palace. I mean, look at those fixtures. You can't be selling him. Like, obviously, if he comes off after 45 minutes in the next game or doesn't start, then you can start thinking. Then about I start got, getting got, worried. Got, yeah. yeah. yeah but you've got to give him, like you say, next two games at least. Gordon I mean. is quicker on my cut list. So at the moment, because Gordon costs more, I, I know his results. Really? You want to cut him? Not now. Not now. But like, I would say, like, when we get to here, the two away games, Wolves, Fulham, and then Man City, and then Everton away, four away mm-hmm. games, so three away games in four. You know, I know yeah. it's a bit, like, not really, like, a stat that I want to put too much weight into, but Newcastle were not as good away from home pretty much all of mm-hmm. last season compared to home. So, for me, I look at that, the home game is Man City, there's three away games. Yeah, I mean, that's the point when I'm getting rid of Jacob Murphy, for example, and then possibly mm. Lewis Hall as well. Um, although he might be Rico Lewis by then anyway, so. Yeah. I'm going to no, get I this Rico so. Lewis propaganda change. out. So I might join you then. If I did hear that Pedro Porro wasn't, you know, going to be back for some time, a couple of game weeks at least. So, you know, if I knew that he was out of Everton, I might just get Yeah, if we, heard, if we heard anything about Porro, I don't, I don't feel like I've heard anything. No, so some people say it was the ankle, we've got to wait for a scan, and they say Ange is a lot kind of more honest in the presses than some managers, like I guess Howe and Arteta and others, who, who will just outright not answer or lie. But So you would assume we get definitive info from Ange. Yeah, it's just funny that we've not heard anything yet. Normally, 
normally people are all over this sort of stuff when it's a popular FPL pick. So it's quite surprising. Yeah, you see photos of them getting a scan. Yeah, or... all sorts of stuff. Hmm. So, it's tough. Surprising. I think with him though, like I thought it was a dead leg more than an ankle. Like there were some people showing like videos of him stamping his foot and grabbing to yeah. the ground, like a bit of a dead leg. And then there was a video of him after the game as well, like just casually standing around chat to people. So it, my, my view was like, you know, if you're injured, like would you not go down the tunnel if it was that bad? So I'm saying he was there because he wanted to like support the team and help push them over the line for the winner. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I just I, I don't know what to think of that. It's a weird one. He'll probably be okay. He looks like a tough cookie as well. So yeah, probably be all right. Yeah. And then I think there's nothing you need to do with the team really, unless we get any leaks that he said Hall's not in the team or something random like that. So what would you do if Poro definitely didn't play, and then like Conte to Lewis. Was, I guess the sub right? So would I? So you no no I think would would I sell Poro for Lewis? Is that the actually plan? I would sell Poro because if you look at because Poro after this week I think his picks just get pretty bad. Just click on him. I think the next two are um, terrible. Yeah, but yeah after, after that, this again. yeah Newcastle and Arsenal like if he's going to be out for the Everton game, do you even want him for those other two? So maybe I don't know. I'd possibly consider selling him. I think because you've got concert at home to Arsenal. It's not an easy. It's not an easy. He just was for play the fixtures concert. after, right? Yeah, so yeah, the concert yeah. was only picked for these two fixtures in three and four, where Poro was gonna be benched anyway. So for mm -hmm. me, it's like if I'm not gonna get Poro in the fixture that, like, I wanted to keep him, and I was gonna bench Poro for two weeks and then start him again once the fixtures got good. I wanted to keep him like most of the season. I think five point five. I think he's gonna be in the yeah. top three most attacking contributions of any defender this season. So. I think Trent, him and Ben White, I think they're going to be up there. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I've got to wait for some legit Poro news. Um, do you know what day they play? Do they play uh, on the Saturday or the Sunday? <laughs> that that, that uh, could show. Well, if you man. scroll, if you scroll down, it'll show you on the there's fixtures on this page as well. Oh, there nice. you go, another little. Another These things I just thing didn't even people, know. Oh, the FDR. The FDR, and then if you go down again, Amazing. fixtures. So, yeah, Spurs play on the Saturday. Three o'clock. Okay. There might oh but it's home. I think if it was away and I could like get someone like Tommy Gunn who was uh, in the chat earlier, like I remember he went there to Bournemouth when Arsenal played away and he had a video mm. still in viral on X of the players coming off the bus and which players didn't come off. I think it was Saka. <laughs> so good. I'm sure we'll hear something. Like I said, he's a popular pick, so people will be interested. For sure. I think what we'll do is um because we are both pretty locked in, I think, um, with our plans. It sounds like we both would buy a defender at most. Yours isn't even enforced. Yours is just if you heard Hall doesn't play, yeah, you might just I do just it for the Rico fun. Lewis. I just yeah. got Rico Lewis FOMO. Remember I said that right at the beginning, I give in to FOMO all the time, so I'll probably have him in my team. I'd love it. Let's. Um, so we're full, uh, one hour 12. I know we've gone a lot longer than we said we would, but it's just so much fun speaking to you, Peter. We'll take some questions for 10 minutes and then we'll get out of here. Before that Q&A, though, I just want to quickly give a couple of shout-outs. One second, I'm just putting the timestamps in. Cool. So thank you to everyone who's a member. They're still called haulers, but I've been speaking to a few people. Greenback Golfer, who's coming on next week, is a massive uh, Aston Villa fan. He's been one of the super haulers since the beginning, longest time. And he's going to come on and talk about Aston Villa. He's a massive Villa fan. Came on last preseason with Robert Ducky, and we roasted loads of teams. So looking forward to him coming. He said maybe uh, key holders and master key holders because it's locked in FPL. So let me know what you think in the chat. Should we rename the memberships from haulers from the net that days to key holders and master key holders instead of super haulers and haulers? I think that's quite nice. I like his idea. Sounds nice. So that's quite cool. Um, but nice, yeah, so it's nice, right? Greenback Golf, yeah. Gary Horwood, David Harrison. Thank you so much for your membership and your support. Our other haulers or key holders. Podner, Kevin Rose, Blonde, FPL Teacher, Doni FPL, Tom Gorsuch, Lindsay, Akshay, Dom, Claire, Tursks, Catherine A, Harry Not Kane, Neil, Benjamin Lockwood, Big Mike, FPL Discomfort, Grady, Jasper and Singh, FPL Eric, BW Splitter, and the FPL Juice Show. Last but not least, our Patreons, Elron, FPL California, Mike Burke, Draft Alchemy, and Dr. Green Fun. So I think this is the part where we just go to the Q&A. We have some fun. And yeah, thank you everyone for the support. If you're new around here, please do subscribe. I think we're one subscriber away from 2,900, which I've been trying to get to the entire preseason, Peter. But as more people sign in and realize net that hole is gone after four seasons, mm -hmm. I lose subscribers at the same rate I gained them. So I've got the 2,900, and then it keeps going back to like 2,890. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, like uh, I need to definitely lock in the logo soon because people are going to jump in their phone and be like, what's this <laughs> thing? I don't remember following that logo. 
Um, I don't want to get them too used to this logo being the final logo because then it's going to yeah. change again. <laughs> oh, man, it's terrible. But, guys, um, we'll come to your questions. I think let's start with the Discord questions. We have a few from our members as we just shouted them out. And then we'll do the ones in the live chat. So please do put any questions you have for uh, Peter about FPL team, non-FPL related, and even just about your own game with two teams if you like. While you're doing that, guys, I'm going to go to the Discord questions first. So let's just start there. So the first one is from our member BW Splitter. The Kwanzaa Dilemma. I have Trent, Robinson, and Poro, and Ben Johnson. So similar to you, as well as obviously Kwanzaa. He hates the idea of losing value already and doesn't want to use a free transfer on a 4.5 if but he's saying what if poro also ends up out so what, what do you think they don't really want to use the transfer they don't want to buy a 4.5 million defender but they're saying when was this uh, and poro. when was this question asked because i feel like it might be too late it was asked yeah last night late last night i think by now yeah, Quanza's Quanza 4.4 now because he went down last night so so you'd be selling your, for no 4.5 now yeah your, your options are a four point so if you still got him, you got to keep him now because it's too late. Um, so now, if Poro is out, then you're going to have to start Poro, buddy. Um, if if you read as yeah, I, out and Poro is out, you can't. I go think you sell 4. Poro five to four million. No, because you, you'd have to go to four million, like you said. I think, and Poro's next two fixtures after after Everton are so bad, you probably don't want him for them anyway. And you probably were going to play plan to play Quanza, which you can't do now. So, so I would do Poro to Rico Lewis and. So he said he would wait, but then he says it will suck the wait, lose the money, and then still have to transfer him, lol. So I think uh, he, he yeah. he's willing to wait for the info. Um, so Maserawi's been spoken about a lot, and Dunk. Any questions on them from Catherine? A? Any thoughts, I mean, on them from Catherine? A? Mm. Maserawi got bonus, right? And the question is, will he be playing a similar role for United in future games to be hoovering up bonus every time, or is it just kind of... Possibly, but I don't... I... But the problem is United and uh, Brighton's fixtures just aren't great at the moment. Um, I don't think I'd want either of them. Not yet, anyway. Like Brighton defenders, I think, will be very popular in week four because they've got Ipswich and Forest at home. But you don't want a Brighton player now. They've got United and Arsenal. Like You don't want a defender for them. United, Brighton, Liverpool. Again, you want one of them probably in, in game week four when they play Southampton, Crystal Palace. So... I wouldn't want either of them at the moment, to be honest. Um, I'm not. So I don't know. We've seen one game of we've seen one game of Maserawi. Like we we just don't know. We don't too know early. if he's gonna. Yeah, it's too early to say. We don't know what the plan he's is. He's the most important player, and... though, right? So he's the most signed player, I think, of the entire game. Yeah, so because far. he because he plays for Man United and he got. A there's a lot of Man United fans who play yeah. FPL. Right? Man United, Man United players go up quick because there's a lot of Man United fans. But I'm not. I'm not infused. I would buy Rico Lewis, but fair. So yeah, Maserati's mm. here. 336k transfers in. Havertz 200,000. Oh, the most sold it, players. I mean, if you have to play them in the next two games, probably Ma Maserati. But I don't like it at all. I think yeah, you I can think season Duncan's both games. So... He's good for four yeah. and five, but again, you don't really want to start him after that either. Person, but it's the same as Maserawi as well. They've just they've got awful games in game week two and three from a defensive point of view. So I, I, I wouldn't get either. If you have to get one, Lewis Dunk, I guess maybe, but not based on anything. Yep. So one other thing is, um, there's a question about data and algorithms. So it says, like, look what al what is in the algorithm. Say someone like Hub uses or you use your own algorithm for predicted points. Like, what is in those that explains the difference in cash looking like the best Villa defensive asset? But well, no one believes it. So why is it the models think cash is the best asset, but then like no one in real life agrees that Matty Cash is the best asset? Is it simply minutes or his underlying yeah. stats weighted more heavily in the algo than in experts' minds? Probably that, and it's probably a hangover from the beginning of last season. I don't remember if he was scoring quite a lot of goals, getting a lot of XG, and he was like, because everybody was on Matty Cash at the beginning of last season. He scored like a brace, and his stats are really good. Um, it's probably like, so talking about what goes into algorithms, it's a it's a combination of different things. So a lot of it is previous statistical data from the last two, three, four seasons, depending on how far the algorithm wants to go back, and then you wait last season higher than two seasons ago which is weighted higher than three seasons ago for example layered over with like betting odds and 
and all sorts of stuff. Essentially, the model or the algorithm can take in whatever inputs it wants. And then obviously you layer your expected minutes over the top of that. And then you get a number that says this is how many points they're expected. So there'll just be something in Cash's data mixed with his expected minutes that says he's expected to do well. But why real people probably don't think it's a good place to go is because I think a lot of Villa fans think he's their weakest position in the team right now. And mm -hmm. there's potential of him being replaced. I mean, even the the right back, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, Ned Djurkovic or something. A 4.0, by the way, um, looks decent. So I think there's there's just a bit too much threat to cash. And I think he went off. Yeah, he, he went off holding his hammy as well. Um, Claire yeah, Fios, so, so I assume if there's, I mean, if there's updates from the press conferences, obviously that's going to drop cash's expected minutes if he's carrying something, which will probably drop him down a bit more. But yeah, it's weird. Sometimes the, the stats will just bring up some players that you've never thought out about. But that's why Mavid, sometimes Mavid Mavid was these things. So like Simon yeah, was saying yesterday, start. he was saying he like um, was forced excluding him, for example, because he kept appearing <laughs> yeah, in solves. Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem. Like That's why I say there is still a human ele element. I think Trigger Lick said it earlier that there's the models can't know everything. So if you bring your own expected minutes in and exclude players or adjust minutes, you can try and get advantages that way. Um, models aren't perfect. Yeah, well, there you go. Literally, the exact words that are on screen. They aren't perfect. They can never be perfect. And they do have weaknesses. And yeah. So how about this question from Trigger then? So moving on from the kind of the models not being perfect. He says, how will they cope with the need to maintain team value? Is there any so this is you have on that from like the data input point of view that you put in? Or if you don't want to see this, this I can. Yeah, well, this is something... So this is the sort of thing that FPL review does, which is what I don't do. So remember what I was talking about? I, I like to give all the, the information and then you can you can plan your own solves, as, as it were. So you can plan your own mm -hmm. team weeks in advance and that's what I enjoy. Whereas FPL review is more of taking this sort of stuff into account. So it'll take into account things like the value of a free transfer and and making transfers now compared to making them in weeks in advance and stuff like that. And that's that's probably something like this would probably be a part of reviews model. So I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be able to answer how they would do that or what they would take into account for that. Yeah. So I think for me, my understanding is, as you say, like what you value the actual transfer as. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like, if I'm going to make a transfer it's valued as four points, let's say if that's the value I want to use, but people use a lower number, I think. And mm -hmm. um, I just say four points because it's a four point hit, but I think people value it a bit less. Um, I guess the best way to get other formats. So like, say like Sky, because you have limited transfers or Telegraph, you only get 40 or 50 a season. When you use them, they're gone and there is no bench. Yeah. So if you get to the end of the season and your team's all injured, you just won't have 11 players every week because you just can't make any more transfers. So like in those games, the value of a transfer, we always used to say like, I need my transfer to give me that 20 points, like mm -hmm. 10 point and then captain them as well for the game day that they were the only player playing that I have. So it's mm -hmm. like you would only really make those moves if sometimes we called them two for ones, three for ones. Like, like let's say on Saturday, um, Sun plays and then Arsenal play three times before he plays again. So I might do like Sun to Saka, Captain Saka on all the days Arsenal play. You know, that's a lot of extra fixtures I'm gaining mm -hmm. with that move. So those extra points I'm gaining 10, 20 points that's what I'm targeting. In FPL, it's harder to measure because you can keep taking hits mm -hmm. and there are a lot more chips compared to those other games. So I think in each game, in every format, there is some kind of maybe more optimal route to consistently get results, as you were saying. But it is also quite fun trying to make that decision yourself, I find. And it's the same. A lot of people on review, people think they're blindly following a model. They're not. Like a lot of them are just putting in their own inputs. The difference with mm -hmm. your planning tool is I can do it in a more visual way than a necessarily having to be the data as the front and center of it. And it doesn't have maybe like some of those FPL filters, as you were mentioning. But it does still have a lot of interesting stuff like the predicted lineups and it does have predicted points still. So, you know, different models. But for me, I just want to see it in the way it looks on FPL's website. And for that reason, I think. Yeah. And I guess I guess the maintaining team value as well is is about if if you're trying to solve for the future and you're trying to find an optimal path of transfers in the future, I guess it's going to have to take into account if I let Kwanzaa drop to 4.4, that means I've 
basically lost access to all other 4.5 defenders at that point because you can only go for a 4.0 at that point. So I guess it has to weigh up the cost, like you said, of a free transfer compared with not being able to get player X in three weeks because a player's dropped in team value. So I guess there has to be some sort of value attached to a free transfer and a value attached to not owning this other player in future. And whether it can find valid replacements or combinations of transfers that will get you to the similar predicted total points for those weeks or something. So that's where, where like I said, review is good at being able to, or other models like that, transfer solvers, I guess, planners, where they can take in all of these different various variables and kind of plug them all into giving you different paths, which is a step beyond just here's some predicted points. Definitely. Um, so just in the interest of respecting your time, and I know we're definitely over, so we'll make sure we're up here about one hour, 35 minutes. These are going to be quick fire now. I think there's so much we could have talked about that we didn't that um, I'm sure the fans will be begging for you to come back. So if you did enjoy it today, please help the channel by sharing the good word online afterwards and letting people know about Peter's appearance and his tools as well, of course. Um, if you don't know about his tools, he has the iOS and Android apps as well as the website. So do go check it out. There's links in the video description and podcast description. So please do that. Um, but we're going to go quick fire now. Quick thank you to Tiggy Taylor for gifting five memberships to the channel. That's amazing. Let's take your question quick. So how does the EO work when going for captain? If I have Salah and KDB game week two, risk reward if I captain KDB. Um, so for me, uh, these are just pure numbers. Um, when you own a player, you get, let's say, 100% effective points. And then if like 40% of people own that player as well, you're only getting 60% of the points because 40% of the people are going to get the same 100% of points as you. So you always get 100% of the player you have and 200% of the player you captain. That's why you can see EOs above 100%. And um, if you see like an EO below 125%, that would still count as a differential captaincy because 200% is what a captain's EO should be if for your own team's input. So if I have a 125% captain, that means I'm going to get 75% of their points, which is great. And then if it's below 100%, then damn. If you've got like a, so for example, KDB, who might be very low on the EO side, I don't know what his EO is now compared to Salah, but it's probably similar or lower. You know, you would be getting 200% minus whatever KDB's ownership is. So if KDB's ownership was 50% for the sake of argument, by captaining him, he'd get 150% of his points. If Salah's ownership was actually, you know, with captaincy, let's say 100, you would only get 100% of his points. So the risk reward only really comes into it in that sense that, You've also got to remember that it's the difference in points between the two if you own both of them. Some people will say like, oh yeah, I captained this player, they got 20, and the other player got 40. And they're like, I've missed out on 40 points. But they haven't. They've missed out on the gap between their base scores. Because you've only missed out on the gap, right? You've, you've still, even if you move the captain, you still had the points from the other guy. So you've got to remove the doubled captain points from what you have to the guy you have. So I think it's never as brutal a swing as it seems is all I'm trying to say. And for risk reward this early, I'll go for the player you're confident of. That fixture for KDB is incredible. And if you're sure he starts, I think that's, that's fine. That's, uh, I know you would probably do more of an aggressive move like that than me, Peter. Uh, yeah, I no, I, but something like that, I don't think I would mess around with something like that. Like, I think KDB is going to be so low owned that even if, even if he goes big, you're going to benefit massively from it anyway. So... I feel like the risk reward on that one is just like not worth it. You're going to be happy if KDB does well mm -hmm. anyway. And the potential to get destroyed by Haaland is so high that I, I'd probably... But this is Salah, high. right? So this is Salah and KDB. So for me, oh, like Salah I, and KDB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a bit oh, different. Okay. It just, just if you want to be in that Haaland. City game. Yeah, if you want to be in the City game and this is mm. your way in, it's like you've already picked KDB in game week one, I'm assuming, like, with this fixture in mind, I would stick to the plan. I, I don't know what you think, but yeah, I I think I would just stick with Salah. He's proven he's fair. He's at yeah, home. I mean, KDB. He's we're not sure like... the minutes, right? I, I know yeah, I still feel like it's a bit of a risk. He's a sort of game Ipswich at home where he could just be given a rest. Like ugh, I probably wouldn't risk. Like I said, if KDB does well, you're gonna you'll probably do fine anyway. So quick ones will go. So Neha asks about Toronto chapter lead. Yeah, so there's a few guys, I think Canuck, and um, there's a few people from um, Canada as well that 
have been doing the meets in Toronto. Uh, well, you you were obviously back in New York, as you say, doing the meets there. So there's like 60, 70 people, Pete, who like manage like the FPL meets like voluntarily all over the world in different cities. So it's not just London. Like obviously I mentioned mm-hmm. if you're around London, 19th October, come along guys, but they're all over the world. There's been ones in Kazakhstan, Iran, India, West Coast, US, East Coast, um, every, genuinely everywhere. Like you, you'd be baffled. <laughs> you'd be so- it's a global game. When I, I was looking at my analytics on like Google Analytics for the website for the last last week and it was it was almost impossible to find a country that hadn't visited the website. I'm talking like Taj, Tajmikistan, Taj, places you didn't even normally think like of, right? Uzbekistan yeah. and China and Russia and Canada, North America, Chad, Mali, Argentina, like literally every, like it was impossible to find countries that hadn't visited the website. It was insane. So it's a completely, truly global game now, which is, which is really fun. And it's nice to kind of coming out of those lockdowns, we did start to get to go and see each other, watch the games together. It's great fun. And if you've never been, I recommend, even if it's just two free of you as FPL managers in somewhere in your local town, go and watch it. Because that's how it started, right? It was just like five, six, seven friends watching games and mm-hmm. people online saw it and they were like, oh, I'm in this city too. Like, I want to watch games too. And it just got bigger. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be massive. If anything, it's nicer when it's those early days and it's more intimate and you're just having fun with a few people watching. But yeah, Nehal, send me a message and I'll, Tell you which people on X are the uh, on the Canadian side. So Gareth Pashley got their highest rank this week in three seasons. Um, they say they know it doesn't mean much, but they're very pleased. So Yashman said, "Congrats, that's really cool." Enjoy I've got a few it. people without Harland. Um, what else do we have? We have co masks. What about if Doku is playing? Would you sub Harland out? Harland must hate trying to guess if and where Doku is <laughs> going to pass the ball. Um, <laughs> how old uh, is um the player that doku is going to be playing against because there's this running joke that he has incredible games every time the fullback that he's playing against is over 30 like genuinely well, like every it depends. single game that he does well in they're always like it, it's getting to well the they're both the young i think it depends if tuan zabi is going to play again or if ben johnson is going to come in but both of them i think are young enough so he's not going to have a good game is what we're saying and he's not going to give the ball time to... you're giving me hope man maybe if switch can get some points here well, I think, yeah, I think it's just Haaland must want to punch Doku every time he plays with him. Um, That's so funny. Yeah, um, what do you think about Rice from Coop Cakes? Um, Two million cheaper than Odegaard, only 20 points or so less than him last year. I think he's a, giving you a decision to make. I'd want him as a second mid after Saka. I personally don't want to use two midfielder slots on Arsenal. So unless like Martinelli was nailed, I'd rather go there for half a million more if I see a bit of a return to form from him. Otherwise, I'd be looking at Kai. Um, I like the double attack more than the double defense. And maybe that's why I'm saying that. But I also feel Saka for me is like a mainstay. So it's hard for me to say go for Rice unless it's Saka plus Rice. Um, I agree. The savings could be used better elsewhere. I still want to see where Odegaard plays, depending on who the left center mid is at Arsenal. And how often that changes. Is it Havertz? Is it Rice? Is it Marino if he signs? Who plays as the six? Is it Rice? Is it Party? Is it Jorginho? So it, there's just so much unknown yet. So until the window closes, I wouldn't be looking to go there. I'd wait till about game week six at this stage to be buying Rice personally, if that's the route you want to go. And you'll have a lot more info about Odegaard's, whether he's going to be the kind of building up play from the final third or from the first third. Because I'm, I'm sure when I was watching the Wolves game, there was a part where he collected the ball from like the, I think it was from the left back and the left center back. And he was like there what rice normally does but rice was playing further forward and i was like uh yeah okay i've got him in other formats and maybe i should have paid more for saka yeah Um, i think just on rice as well i think one you've got to compare it to other 6.5 million he's 6.5 right yeah you've got to stuff like leon bailey i really like you've got to compare him to six five mids and also you got to think that you're probably going to want free arsenal at some point in the season and do you want rice to be one of them you probably don't. I think you mentioned you probably want Saka, Havertz, and one of the defenders, or double defense and Saka. I think using Rice as one of your Arsenal spots feels like a bit of a waste, to be honest. It's Not like for me. Rod- Rod- if it was five Arsenal. million, if it was five and a half million, I'd said I think FPL fellow when he came on the show, he said he'd have got him for sure, but he's not so um jack m does Anderson going to Fulham benefit us? I have Robinson, I think so. I think they're also signing a CDM so. Um, Colin Buda says, Jack, it may do in the next few game weeks, but once the fixtures get harder, maybe you should sell one or both. Okay. So I think um, Colin is obviously our resident uh, Fulham fan. FPL Maggot says, sell Sun for Foden. What did you hmm. think of Sun? Did you, did you, 
think much of this role on the left uh, wing. Uh, anonymous, I thought. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it didn't look good at all. Um, I think if well, I've got Solanke already, but I do think Solanke's probably going to be a better FBL asset. And for the, the difference in price, I think but the problem was with Foden, do we definitely know he's going to start this weekend? We He played 45 minutes, so he's probably fit to go. But again, if Pep wants to give some players a bit, a bit of an extended rest, because I don't think he wanted to play Foden. He had to bring him on because Savinho got injured, right? So he I don't think to, it was yeah. his plan to play him. So if he wants to give him a bit more of a rest, he could rest him this weekend. You know Son's going to play. He's not going to get dropped. He's probably going to play at least 80 minutes. He's playing Everton. He's probably still on penalties. I think this is probably a rare occasion where I'd give Son another week, although he didn't look very good. It was alarming, and I think Solanke, two and a half million cheaper, I'm sooner to go there. I'm happy enough with Poro. You know, hopefully he's fit. That was kind of what's what annoying as well. He was my like pick instead of the attackers. I wanted mm. a piece of Spurs, and I saw him as an attacker. Um, Foden, I do like Foden. Like, I was always just going to wait because obviously with the Euros and kind of just thought I'd wait. He played 45 minutes. There's a chance he starts. Um, Savinho seems fit, so he, he could play as well. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in Savinho. I think he's six and a half million as well. So, again, like he's someone who's quite exciting. Like if Gordon or someone like Nkunku had gotten injured, that might have been a bit of a fun punt. But Foden for Son, unless you're captaining him in this fixture for me, I'm like what? Let's say Foden gets 10 points. And then what? Son gets one goal. Similar return. Like it's just yeah, too I just, much. I don't see the upside over using the transfer. You're talking about value. I don't see as much of a gain, like, right? Like if it was a captain. They feel very similar. If you don't have like a Man City player and you definitely want to captain one and obviously you can't afford to go to Haaland now, then yeah, maybe I'd consider it if there's no other captain you're happy with. But if you have Salah, then I would captain him because I assume if you don't have Haaland, maybe you have Salah. Um, so Trigger says this, and it's a great one because it's about your site. And I know you've mentioned this because people have sent you before screenshots saying this is the recommended transfer. <laughs> Do you take any notice of the transfer and the recommendations that your site produces? I know you've told me this before, but I want to let you say it on air to Trigger. Um, I do, but I would never make it my overall deciding factor. And it's a very, like when I'm making decisions for transfers, there's what a, a hundred, a thousand things that come into my thinking during that week, whether it's a tweet I've read, some YouTube content I've listened to, a podcast I've listened to, uh, a game I've watched or something. It's just another one of those things what i what i do like though is when it will recommend someone i've never thought of before because normally the transfer recommendations are quite simple and actually i'm looking at mine now for my team and it's recommended transfer is uh is hall to lewis so <laughs> i think it's been biased by the, myself the, the, doing the, the, this talk <laughs> is that the, the models listening to us and uh, adjusting in the background yeah it goes. it's funny i've just looked i hadn't noticed before but it is suggesting hall to lewis i'm um so I do look at them, but I, I normally look at them to see if there's just something I've missed. Like if there's an obvious transfer I've just overlooked or there's a player I hadn't thought about. Like it's it's more for that sort of thing, just to make sure I've kind of covered all the bases and stuff. But I would never trust. The problem is expected points is you're, you're basically trying to bet on a single outcome for a single week on a game that's very variable and part luck. So using it as gospel, which some people do um, and get annoyed when it's wrong, um, is yeah, I don't think it should be your big decision-making point, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, fair. I think with that, we'll get out of here. Just a quick shout-out to FPL Sparta tuning in, all right, all. And Trigger says, great show, guys. Have orders to make breakfast. See you later. Yes, we definitely kept it going. Yeah, so, Peter, thank you for your patience, for being on the show for so long, nearly 40 minutes longer than we planned to run. But this is what happens it. when you just have a nice chat, right, with friends. Um, it's just... This is what I would honestly do with you, like pre-deadline somewhere and, and mm -hmm. then watch the game. So it feels like we're basically doing that, but across video for once instead of in person. So I love that. But um, yeah. thank you so much for coming on, guys. If you don't use FPL team, do go check it out. The links are in the description, as I mentioned. I will be back next week with uh, Greenback Golfer, who's a big Villa fan. And we'll be talking about them as well after the Arsenal game. Obviously, we'll learn a lot more about them. I'm also going to watch that game myself. And so it'll be interesting to have me from the Arsenal perspective and 
Luke from the uh, Villa perspective on the show after we face each other. It's a grudge match for me, so I'm interested. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, thank you as well for the huge um, donation there, Twiggy Taylor, with the five sub memberships. That's amazing. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We're one away from 2,900. And we'll see you next time. Uh, Peter, yeah, let's uh, hopefully get better results this game week and not have players going off the way they did in game week one, respectively, because it was a bit of a car crash, wasn't it? Yeah, those are the variance gods. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me on. It was, uh, it was good, good fun. I enjoyed it. Flown by as well. It felt like 10 minutes. So yeah, if anyone's got any questions, just reach out on Twitter. Um, although I don't post very much, I'm always looking on there. So I will respond to DMs and stuff. Don't worry about that. Um, and yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Amazing. We'll see you very soon, I'm sure. But until now, on to game week two. We're not locked in yet. But it sounds like we're both tempted by Rico Lewis. And that's the too long don't read of the episode. Peace <laughs> out. See you all next time.